There was a story in USA Today, electric car EV sales slump. What is the consumer gap? They're, they're trying to express that people are out there wanting EVs, but they're not selling what they might want. And I thought this was different. Customers looking, 47% want one for less than $40,000, and 22% are looking for an EV below $30,000. Currently, there's only four EVs available in the United States below 40000 and the average transaction price was 61700 I don't know if they're factoring Tesla into these numbers, but you you know a Model 3 would have fit in there as well on the low end. Yeah, the, the, there was a guy that uh, posted, which I thought was interesting. He says, you know, we're talking about a Tesla for, you know, under $25,000, right? And we're looking forward to, he says, they already exist. They're called a used Model Y. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Well, we were talking earlier before we got on the show, we were talking about our friend Alex Lawrence from EV Auto out in Utah, who is an EV only used car dealer. And he was showing all of these Tesla Model 3 long ranges he has on the lot that just came in. They're just under $19,000 after the $4,000 rebate. And he, re- he really points out some unique cars on his show, but that's really getting cheap. Now, these... Model 3 long ranges all had about 90,000 miles on it. But, you know, I, I've seen somebody was reporting on Facebook yesterday how they just broke 300,000 miles on their original battery and they've had less than 10% degradation in those 300,000 miles on a Model 3, a 2020 Model 3 long range. So one of the things is a lot of the battery degradation was bigger when you were talking about the 2012s, 2016s, and 19s. And it's just like Chevy Bolts had some problems with fires, 2020 and older. But since then, since 21 and on, they got rid of that problem. And you just, you hear all this stuff over and over again, but people don't realize, you know, EVs, what was the first electric cars that came out in the 90s? Oh, the first one, what, first commercial ones? Yeah. Well, uh, commercial ones. I mean, not, not obviously the ones in 1830. Uh, came out uh, in the 1998, 1999 time frame. All of them, you know, most of them starting with lead, lead acid batteries because that was there. And then within that four or five year period of time, they all began to switch over to nickel metal hydride. And lithium batteries in the form of those laptops, the ones they put in the, in the AC propulsion T0, um, you know, those were the, the nickel metal hydride was state of the art at the time. And uh, it would take a while for, the lithium technology is well. It would take a good dec- a good decade before it finally would catch up. And the guys over at Tesla decided, hey, if they could do it with the T zero, we'll do it in the uh, Roadster. So, so we were talking before the show because uh, Alex had pointed out to me on his own, you know, on a video he had done about how he had this Cadillac ELR plug-in hybrid on his lot, and he sold it right away. It, it's already gone, but. So I want to do a little checking on this because I was not familiar with this car. And mind you folks, we're showing a 2014 plug-in hybrid. Now, this was a $76,000 car in 2014. This would be a $100,000 car today if they still made it. But somebody else brought it to my attention, but it has a 37-mile battery range and they get the equivalent of about 38 miles per gallon and yeah, in hybrid mode. But for a car that is essentially a say $90,000 equivalent car in today's dollars, here's what's really cool about this. So these show these prices ranging anywhere from $14,000 to $24,000 because they're plug-in hybrids and they're used, they're all eligible if you make under $150,000 a year for a $4,000 federal tax credit. Now, a couple of these, this one down here that's 14, I noticed, I looked at it and I think it just showed that it had just taken a $4,000 price drop. They are beautiful cars and you know their Cadillacs, all that. And she wanted a great deal on, on something. I and I'm not. I don't know any of these car dealers. I'm not trying to 
advocate for any of these folks. But it's just, you know, with the $4,000 tax credit, it's just a pretty amazing deal that something like that. You can drive electric and still have the gas range that you would need to go, you know, visit your grandparents, you know, on the other side of Iowa or whatever. Yeah. And since most of the guts are a Chevy Volt, you're probably not going to have crazy expensive costs to repair one of these. The only, the, well, the, the stipulation with the Volt, and I'm assuming it's probably the same with the ELR, is that you do need to burn premium gasoline in them. Uh, at least those are the early versions. So you're going to pay a little bit more for the gasoline. But if you, you know, if you're like most people, you don't drive more than, you know, 30, 40 miles in a day anyway. And that's all easily within the electric range. In fact, GM has set up tech, they're set up a sensor in the car to to turn the car on at times just to get rid of the gasoline in it. The target market for Cadillac cars has typically always been people over 60. So I, what I'm saying is these cars are probably fairly lightly driven, you know, so they probably haven't had a whole lot of hard miles on them either. It's not like some of the high mileage Hertz cars that were all being used for Uber and, and delivery services. So I just throw that out there. I, I just thought that was really kind of shocking to see that. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.